At this year's SciFest, it's all about the environment. Here at Otto Schreiner Hall, the Oni Jubeir illustrates the crucial need for the awareness of climate change and the media's impact on the environment. From a journalistic perspective and from a human historian perspective, this is the story of the century, climate change. Global warming and climate change will change the world that we live in. We're moving into a, uh, an environmental context that is outside anything into which modern humanity evolved. Now, I want for a second for you to imagine that all the air in this room is the air that surrounds Earth. And then the contents of this glass jar represents the amount of greenhouse gases that are in the atmosphere. So now, that's all the natural greenhouse gases in the atmosphere. This constitutes then what human beings have added in the last sort of 200 years. That's through driving cars, cutting down forests, burning savannas, farming with cows that burp a lot. For the past 200 years, rich countries have had access to all of that atmospheric space to build their economies, to lift their people out of poverty, to become strong, dynamic superpowers. So why should those rich countries now be allowed to have access to the atmospheric space that's left, if we only have a little bit left? So poor countries are saying it's only fair that you guys stop your emissions and you give us access to the atmospheric space that's left so that we can make our um, country strong, economically powerful, and that we can lift our populations out of poverty. What's special about South Africa's carbon footprints? Well, it's huge. It really is very big. Per capita, South Africa has a higher carbon footprint because we have a, an energy-intensive economy that's built on cheap, dirty coal. South Africa has been described as the United States of the African continent because we are the biggest um, energy producers and we are the biggest emitters. We contribute to something like 40% of Africa's emissions. The media industry has a critical role to play in terms of informing the public, keeping the public responsible, and keeping the government accountable in terms of energy responses. Journalism in the media industry does have a very high carbon footprint. If you look at the energy costs associated with running broadcast media, for instance, and the energy costs associated with running print media, very, very high. There are ways that the industry can reduce its footprint, whether it's you know, using more efficient technologies, whether it's moving away from print. We sort of have a window between sort of by 2017, we really need to start reducing our emissions quite seriously. Otherwise, we've really lost this window of opportunity to, to tackle climate change. You know, there's some very interesting figures that show, as a country, South Africa could uh, do away with the need for additional energy infrastructure if we implemented energy efficiency measures right now. Ha, ha, ha.